welcome to my kitchen. I'm Sarah Ann Vale. I am so excited for this episode of Diet Free. We are making my family's heirloom carrot cake, which is kind of like a carrot cake meets a hummingbird cake, but we're gonna diet free it up and sub the carrots for beets. Just beat it. I can't wait to get started. We're gonna do dry ingredients first, because anytime you're making a cake, you do dry, then wet, then dry into the wet. I have two cups of gluten-free flour. You could do a whole wheat flour. You could do half almond, half coconut, whatever you wanna do. There's so many different goodies in here that it doesn't really matter what flour you use. You do what's best for you and what you think is the yumminess. To our two cups of flour, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Because we always need at least a teaspoon of salt in every recipe. Otherwise, I'm not gonna have to taste anything. To leaven our cake and make it nice and fluffy, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of baking soda, two teaspoons of allspice, rich, warm flavor. You can use whatever spice you like. This is originally a carrot cake recipe, and allspice is great for any root vegetable because it's just earthy. And whatever your ingredients are should be celebrated for what they are. Carrots are a root vegetable, they come from the earth, which is why we're gonna do beets, which is also a root vegetable. Beat it up! All right, we're gonna whisk this all together. Our dry is ready. We're gonna set that aside just for the moment. We're gonna combine our wet. I have two cups of organic unbleached cane sugar in here. If you wanna do any other sweetener, please do. I got four eggs. If you can't do eggs, there's a lot of really great direct baking egg substitutes out there. Use your favorite. Since this is a cake, for cakes and muffins, you can actually substitute an egg for a quarter cup of sparkling water. Incorporate all of our eggs. Even though you can't feel the moisture inside of sugar, it's technically a wet ingredient because of the way it bakes. I'm gonna use one and a half cups of coconut oil. I love the flavor of coconut, so more coconut is better, and it's also just so healthy. Just so you know, the fatty acids in coconut oil can encourage your body to naturally burn fat which can pump you up. Coconut oil is also a solid at room temperature. So I put this in the microwave for like 30 seconds, barely. It's not too hot now, so it's not gonna cook the eggs. It's about room temperature. But if it's just a little cooler, it's gonna be a solid like butter. I am gradually whisking in all of my oil. Luckily, eggs are an amazing emulsifier. Eggs are like matchmakers. But I am giving it a little bit of time Instead of jumping in all at once, we'll let them come together, have a conversation. And anytime you're gonna add any kind of fat, you wanna add flavor. Since I love the flavor of coconut, that's what I'm gonna add. If you can't have coconut, use a different oil that's yummy. Peanut oil is also great. Now it's starting to look like cake batter. I'm gonna slowly introduce and fold our dry into our wet. I'm using a gluten-free flour, but if you were using a regular all-purpose flour, the more you mess with your batter, the tougher it's gonna be. So we want to very gently, literally as if you're folding a towel or folding a burrito, fold it in together. As soon as all the flour disappears into the batter and everything's all married together, we're gonna add all of the goodies that go inside of this cake. We're doing a carrot cake, but we're gonna do it with beets. I actually shredded three cups of beets. They're beautiful. You can use whatever root vegetable you want. You could do sweet potatoes, you could do parsnips. Of course, you can do carrots, you could do rainbow carrots. But yeah, we're gonna add three cups of whatever your root vegetable of choice is into the bowl. It's like the shiny. I don't just love the flavor of beets, I love the rich color. It makes everything you eat it with vibrant and beautiful. It's so yummy and it's so good for you. Since this is kind of like a hummingbird cake, we're actually gonna add in about a cup of pineapple. You can also use a can of pineapple. And we're gonna add a cup of shredded coconut. I have unsweetened, because I like to be able to sweeten my fruits that I eat, but sweetened shredded coconut would work just as well. And I love pecans. Add a cup of chopped whatever nuts you want. Make sure all of your goodies and ingredients are equally distributed throughout the whole batter. Now that everything's all incorporated, we get to fill our cupcake tins. I have two tins, each for a dozen cupcakes. We're making two dozen cupcakes. You could also do a nine by 12 inch 
baking dish. You could do two eight inch rounds if you want to do a stacked cake. You can do whatever you want. I'm doing cupcakes because I'm all about the portion control. And then you have more cupcakes to show people. I just have simple parchment paper liners. You could do these with no liners. As long as you have whatever you're baking the cake in greased. Oh, it's heavy, there's a lot in there. I have about a third a cup measuring cup. You could do the, like nice little scoops. You could use a spoon. I like consistency. So I'm gonna put about a third of a cup in each one. I'm gonna get it nice and heaping. You can see the chunks. You want them to be full, but not overflowing. Everybody's all filled. So we're gonna put these in the oven for just about 15 minutes. If you were baking two inch rounds or a nine by 12, you'll want like 30 to 45 minutes. We're gonna bake them just until they're done through. Your kitchen will smell good, you all know. While we're baking the cupcakes, we're gonna make our frosting. I'm gonna make a cream cheese frosting since this is a carrot cake inspired recipe. Since we're doing beets, we're gonna do goat cheese because goat cheese and beets are delicious. I have eight ounces of goat cheese in here. You can use eight ounces of regular cream cheese, dairy-free cream cheese, whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna whip it first so that once it's fluffy, we'll add our sweeteners. We're gonna add half cup of butter. You could use whatever non-dairy butter you wanna use. I love butter and I love Irish butter and this is frosting, so that's what I'm gonna use. Let the stand mixer do the work. All the way up. And scrape her down, make sure everything's incorporated. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla because vanilla is delicious. Whip that all together. I've got a pound of powdered sugar. You can do 450 grams also. If you wanted to not use a cane sugar, you can literally put whatever sweet you're, you're using in the blender to get it that nice fine consistency so that when we whip it into our butter, you're not gonna have any graininess. So this, we must be very careful. And if it makes a mess, that's okay. I'm gonna just put it on stir and very slowly incorporate the powdered sugar. Give it a little more juice. You can also use a hand mixer. I have done this by hand too. It is very satisfying and a great workout. All the way to 10. Our frosting is totally fluffy, so we are going to prepare to frost the cupcakes. I actually have a pastry bag. I've even done this just with a Ziploc bag to just cut off the end. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Whee! That's for you. I always wait to trim my pastry bag until I'm really ready because it's already ready to go. One of the nice things about goat cheese is it's a little easier on the tummy than a lot of cow's milk cheeses. She's right. Goat cheese is naturally lower in lactose than cow's milk cheese. Its protein structure is also easier to break down and digest in people's tummies. Our frosting is prepped and ready to go. And our cupcakes are done. So we are going to free them. Stunning. I'm just gonna test to make sure they're done. We're gonna do the old school grandma way and just use a knife. Comes out mostly clean. Mmm, looks like coconut. Warm cake batter goodness. Oh, my heart. I don't know if it's the heat of the oven or the cupcakes. So we do have to let these cool. If you have the time to let them naturally come down to room temperature on your counter, that is the best. If you are pressed for time, you can pop them in the fridge. I wouldn't do the freezer because sometimes if you pop your cupcakes in the fridge or the freezer, they can dry out a little bit. And we didn't just load our cupcakes full of delicious fruit and other goodness for them to be dry. All the cupcakes are room temperature now. They're ready to go. Now I get to frost them. Oop. 
as you're frosting, you want to squeeze from the back. If you squeeze from the front, the frosting is going to go in the direction opposite of where you want it to go. Everybody's frosted. Thank you guys so much for cooking with me. Thank you for letting me share with you an heirloom recipe from my family that I made diet free so that I can enjoy it. I want to hear your family recipes too. I want to know what you've been longing to eat again to celebrate and how we can make it more nutritious and better for you personally. Thank you guys for watching. Keep cooking diet free. Ask me questions, subscribe, and I will see you in a week with another diet free recipe. Mmm. Mmm.